barako bashala la bazusi bahada gas sanda barako zoso tokoto shala la bazusi ada la banda kapura kosola bagadas kabaze sede pokoto shala da bason de bazusi dash kababa kosanda pakada shola bazusi ada bas holy spirit we thank you for the lives you have loosened thank you for the destinies you have loosened thank you for families you have released thank you for opportunities and visions mandates and mantles you have released take all the praise my father for there is no other god like you you deserve it all you deserve it all jesus take it all you alone are worthy as we tarry here for the word briefly minister to us all the spirit in jesus name we pray amen god bless us so much i just felt like doing that as the spirit of god desires the topic of today is the anointing the anointing there are two ways in which god anoints people number one way is through encounters and through the word of god Bible says in the book of Habakkuk chapter 3 verse 4 he says for I looked into his hands in the word of God he says for inside that light was his power there is power that is hidden in light there is power that is hidden in the word of God and encounters there are people who receive anointings not for men but through encounters by the spirit of now, when you are talking about an anointing, you are not talking about anointing oil. Let me just clarify these things first. Bible says in Acts chapter 10 verse 38, how God anointed Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit and with power that he went about doing good and healing them that were oppressed of the devil. How God anointed Jesus Christ, not with an anointing oil, not with a piece of cloth, not with a dove. He says how God anointed Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit and with power. Any teaching on anointing is a teaching about the Holy Spirit. So let us not let us not take as if I'm talking about an anointing oil. No, an anointing oil is a point of contact. A point of contact. The anointing, the real anointing is the Spirit of God. I'm just building up from what we did last Wednesday. Now there are two ways in which God anoints people. Two dimensions in which God anoints people. Number one, you are anointed by encounters and by the word of God. There are people who get, who get anointings through encounters. Solomon did not meet a prophet. Solomon was asleep and while he was asleep, he woke up in the morning and encountered the power of God. He woke up with wisdom. The anointings you receive, not because you are serving. The anointings you receive because you have an encounter with God. Number two, anointing is an anointing you receive by the verge of aligning to a vessel, serving a certain vessel, a man of God who is who has been vested with that category of the anointing. I beg to I beg to say this as well. There are specific men. Anointings are not needed in heaven. The purpose of an anointing, Bible says in Isaiah chapter 10 verse 27, he says the yoke shall be destroyed by the reason of the anointing. There are no yokes in heaven. An anointing is never needed in heaven. An anointing is needed on earth. No wonder while, while the servant of God, prophet Elisha died, he says that while he was inside the grave and even his bones were inside that same grave, he says there was a man that was dead. They took that man, threw him on the bones of Elisha that had been buried and the man resurrected. Not because the man, not because Elisha was there, because the anointing did not go with Elisha. The anointing was still in the bones. Anointing is not needed in heaven. Anointing is needed on earth just building up on a few things number two we should know this that god stores his anointing in men on earth god stores his anointing in men on earth hebrews chapter 7 verse 7 it says uh without contradiction the lesser is always blessed by the greater 
Now, I'm not teaching about human worship. I know there is so many things that have been going around and people worshiping men. This is not about human worship. This is an anointing that is vested upon men. There are various anointings and mantles that are on earth and they are vested in vessels. Any person that aligns himself to that vessel receives the very anointing that is upon that man of God. Lot was never called. It was Abraham that was called. When Abraham was called, Lot decided to go with Abraham. The very blessing that was upon Abraham fell upon Lot. Not because Lot was a righteous person, not because Lot was blessed, but because he was walking under an anointing of Abraham. The moment Lot decided to leave Abraham is the moment the blessing stopped to flow. There are men of God that have been anointed on earth for specific purposes. Anytime you align yourself with that anointing, you desire that anointing. You have, you are a qualified candidate for the reception of that very anointing. Just slowly by slowly as I build up on something. Number three, anointing does not come because you say, I want anointing. Anointing comes because you desire the anointing. First Corinthians, I believe chapter 14 verse 1, it says, desire, ye desire spiritual gifts. There is a place where you must desire, genuine desire. The sons of the prophets walked with Elijah for so many days, so many weeks. In fact, they were seeing him in class, teaching them on prophecy. At some point, they will even know that the man of God is almost leaving earth. And none of them carried an anointing because none of them desired that anointing. When Elisha saw that anointing, he said, I will follow this anointing until I receive it. If there is no desire for an anointing, there is no reception of an anointing. Your reception for an anointing is, is, is relatively proportional to the desire you have towards that anointing. So I've seen so many people saying, as long as I'm going to the prayer mountain, there's no need of me serving men. My anointing shall be found in the place of prayer. Yes, very correct. There is a portion of an anointing that is found via encounters. But there is a portion of an anointing that is found via followership. Elisha did not need to pray for a double portion of an anointing from Elijah. He just needed to follow Elijah and the anointing fell on him. Do you know that Jesus Christ also, while he came on earth, needed to follow john the baptist for the heavens to be opened up unto him and for him to receive an anointing in fact the bible records that the very first sermon that jesus began to preach was the very sermon that john the baptist was preaching when jesus stood in the synagogue and started preaching he said repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand it is the very sermon that john the baptist had been preaching there are many people that follow men of god follow women of god to the extent that when they start singing you know this one is coming from this channel. One way to know a man has stopped from a certain anointing is that their speech, their reaction, the way they do things literally looks like the, the man they are following for that very anointing. There are people currently when you hear them sing, you will, you will see this one is Tasha Cobbs, you will see this one is so and so, you will see this one is Don Moen. There are people when they start preaching now, you will see this one is Ben Hinn. Because by the verge of followership for a certain kind of an anointing, they have attracted that anointing inside their lives. There is power in followership. There is a certain anointing you don't receive simply because you went for a prayer mountain. There are various anointings and mantles that God has already released on earth. When you go to seek God, he will direct you to a certain man and say, go and follow that man. He has that anointing in him. God does not raise us at the same time in the kingdom of God. Does not raise us at the same time. He raises up one man so that when that man rises, by the verge of you following up that man, you receive the very anointing upon your head. These anointings are scarce. And that is why you will see various people, that's why you will see people saying, I don't want you to go for a certain man's meeting. Let me also just correct this and also paraphrase it that we do not carry every anointing in us there are dimensions when somebody is working in an apostolic anointing but the people that come serving under him have an evangelistic anointing some have an apostol a pastoral anointing others have a teaching anointing the fact that you are an apostle does not mean you will train everybody under your congregation that is why we are called a body of christ whenever you don't have a hand there's somebody who has that hand 
Whenever you don't have a nose, there's one who has that nose. Whenever there are people serving under you, permit them to attend meetings of other men. There are men that have that anointing in various meetings that you might not have it. It is a painful truth, but it is the truth. There are things I have, but there are things I don't have. There are things another man of God has. There are things he doesn't have. Whenever you keep your members under a certain jurisdiction and say you cannot listen to another sermon, you cannot listen to another worshiper, you cannot follow another man of God, you are killing the vision of that man. Because there are people who are serving under you that are not meant to be forever disciples. At some point, like Simon Peter, they shall live to become apostles and great healing evangelists. If they have not had sufficient training in that ground in which they are called for, they will never become anything. And, and be sure that when we stand before God, we shall give an account of every man that served under us. There are men that are serving under us that have a different calling from what you are called. When, 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 when Paul, the fact that he was called Saul, when he met Jesus, fell under the anointing, the Lord directed him to pastor or prophet Anania. He did not serve under Anania. Anania served his purpose for a particular time. At the time when, when the scales fell off Paul, at no point did I hear again that Paul has gone back to Anania. Not because Anania was not important, but because there are various dimensions in which God will raise up people. There are people who will connect to you for a time. There are others who will connect to you for quite a long time. It is good you understand these things because there are some of us that will feel bad because we have mentees. We have mentors, and when we see this mentees leaving us, we feel like we are less anointed. No, it is not a less anointing. There is a time when God will bring people to serve under you because there is a certain grace they need for where they are going. After they are done with that thing, they will move to another dimension because the Lord wants to build another dimension of them for the ministry and the purpose in which they are called for. I just want to make these things clear before we start talking about an anointing. Because if we start without making these things clear, we might get to a point where we don't understand anything. And we feel like uh, if, if, if somebody is serving under me, if I'm mentoring somebody, I must mentor him forever. No, there are people whom the Lord will desire them to come serve under me to receive the grace of leadership. Then after that, they are not meant to be leaders. They are meant to be something else. He shall take them to another grace that they need for that dimension. So they shall not stay under leadership. Otherwise, we shall raise up we shall raise up ministers that are having spiritual kwashoko, ministers that are having spiritual marasmus. They are strong in one dimension, but weak in another dimension. We must be careful about this thing. That is the importance of the body of Christ. It is called the body of Christ, meaning there is a point which you have and there is another strength you don't have. Whenever you see somebody doing something, do not be so much rigid. There is a place where that anointing you need for your life. We are not the same. We are designed and wired differently. For instance, if I am a man of God that I believe in so much encounters and I believe in divine provision by the prophetic anointing, I can kneel down and pray and, men, and God touches another man from another city to bless me. I shall teach men in that dimension and forget that there are other men that are not called in that dimension. They are meant to, to do business so that they have money. They are not meant to pray that people come and bless them. If I build people in that only dimension, they shall keep sitting and praying that God asks people to come and bless them. Which is not the same case for their, for their cause. Because for them, the Lord wants them to work so that they have money to support ministry. This is very important. I am just doing something very important for us. Because there are so many people like John the Baptist in the book of Matthew chapter 11. The Bible records that even after John the Baptist had seen that this is the son of the living God. Whose shoe I cannot untie. He got to a place in chapter 11 where he's in prison. And tells his disciples go and confirm is if Jesus is the one. Or should we wait for another? When the disciples go. The disciples of John the Baptist, when they meet Jesus, they, they ask Jesus, our, 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 our man of God has sent us. Are you the one or should you wait for another? And Jesus answered them in one paraphrase. He said, go and tell John the Baptist what you see. You see the blind seeing, the deaf hearing, the dumb speaking, and, and so on and so forth. And he says a very important point down there. He says, blessed is he that is not offended in me. 
you know why John was becoming offended? Because there were some of his disciples that had started following Jesus. The time of John the Baptist was almost ending on earth. The disciples had to be transferred to another teacher. But John the Baptist was so much rigid that you could not accept that my disciples can be mentored by another man of God. Whenever you see certain meetings going on, either in your city, even when you are seeing something going on in your phone online, as long as it is in line with what you are called for, follow it. Because there is a dimension you get from a man of God that is not even your pastor or not even your mentor. Not because your pastor has failed, just because your pastor has not been called in that dimension. When, when, when God brings members under me, there are people who are called to be pastors. There are people I know who are called to be teachers. There are even people who serve under me. I know they are called to be worshippers. I shall not force them to serve under me, yet I don't have the, the vocals, the notes. Whenever I get to that place of vocals and notes, I'll tell them, go and seek for another help. Because at that point, I have not graced for it. You are strong on the place where God has graced you for. You are not strong in everything simply because you have Christ. We are the body of Christ. There is somebody that is an eye. There is somebody that is an ear. We also just say this before I wind up. We shall continue in the next service. I have not even begun about the anointing. We shall teach in the next service. We also build up on this. Anointing works like fluids. Fluids assume the shape of the container. For instance, when you are having Coca-Cola, you are having Crest, there are various bottles. The liquid of Coca-Cola cannot be placed in a vessel of Crest. Or rather, Lady K oil can never be placed in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a container for Nivea. Because the containers are differently. At some point, even when you are looking at this, even if the container is not written Nivea, when somebody asks you what is contained here, you will tell that person this one must be Nivea. Anointing works like that. Every anointing has various possibilities in which it has been called for. You are not anointed, you are not anointed for everything. There is a specific anointing. There is a specific anointing. Just like Coca-Cola is placed in a Coca-Cola bottle, and Crest is placed in a Crest bottle, and Lady K is placed in an oil of Lady K or Nivea or certain containers for various things you will never find Vaseline placed in another thing because the container for it there is a specific shape in which it takes so there are various anointings and, 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 and you would realize the Bible says in Malachi chapter 4 verse 5 he says before the dreadful and the day of the Lord cometh he says there shall be a release of the spirit of Elijah there are specific characteristics associated with specific anointings. Anointings do not have the same characteristics. That is why it is dangerous when you are called to be an usher and start behaving like a kingdom financer. It is dangerous when you are called to be a prophet and start behaving like an usher because the capacity in which an usher is to fill for a normal service is not the same with the capacity in which a prophet is to fill for a service. For instance, one characteristic of the apostolic ministry is that you must be a learner. If you are not a learner, you can never be called in that office. The Bible says in the book of 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 15, he says, study, Paul the apostle, teaching his son Timothy, says, study to show yourself approved, a workman that does not need to be ashamed of his work. Whenever you are called to that office, if you are an apostle and you don't study books, you are an apostolic singer and you don't listen to new songs, don't study vocals, you, you are a failure in the apostolic ministry. That ministry has a characteristic of learners. Always daily you must learn. An usher does not need to learn the same way an apostle does. An apostle will need to be... The reason why the apostolic ministry will call for you to learn, number one, is because an apostolic ministry is first an office of governance before it is a ministry. So there is a place where you will need to govern. Apostolic ministry fills in vacancies. Whenever the apostolic office gets to a place where there is no prophet, the apostolic assumes the office of a prophet. Whenever the apostolic gets to a place where there is no evangelist, the apostolic assumes the place of an evangelist. The apostolic covers and fills in vacancies. Any place there is a vacancy, an apostolic ministry will always fill. 
That is why an apostle must always be a learner. Must always have books. Must always have something he's learning. Because there is a place you shall reach and the Holy Spirit will desire you to be an evangelist. If you are only designed to be called a pastor, without that dimension of an evangelist, you will never achieve anything. The Lord will require to be everything or anything that is missing in a certain jurisdiction. So every anointing has a specific characteristic. That is why you should be careful on the anointing you are following. When Elijah was going, the Bible says that, that before the coming of the Lord, the spirit of, the, of Elijah shall be released. When John the Baptist was coming before Jesus appearing, that spirit was released because the Lord was coming. And there were various characteristics that were associated with Elijah that you'll see them even in John the Baptist. One of them is that all of them were seen in the wilderness. Number two, they were eating various things like John the Baptist was eating locusts. Elijah was eating worms. All of them had a specific kind of clothing. And even the end result of all of it is that all of them are being pursued by women. The Jezebelic spirit always pursuing the prophetic ministry. There are various characteristics for every mandate and every anointing. Not every anointing has the same characteristics. The consecrations are different. The various ways of preparations are different. The various ways of handling that anointing are different. There are different anointings and there are different characteristics channeled for various anointings that are given for it. So you will see a man of God that is called to be a prophet or a man of God that is called to be a pastor and will train the church on a specific dimension, a specific characteristic in which he has been called for. Forgetting that seated under him are people with various characteristics in which you can tell them you can get this anointing from this man. There are people until now I mentor. When they ask me questions, I refer them to specific sermons. I tell them, go and listen to this sermon. It shall help you. Because there are various dimensions I have met, I have not been called into. And it is not, it is not as though you are not anointed. It is just a place where God will make you weak in a certain area. So that you are dependent on the body. So that you are not self-dependent. You are dependent on the body of Christ. So we have seen various we have seen various mentors raising up people who are who are strong in a certain area and very weak in a specific area men who are very strong in excellence they can dress well they can arrange the pulpit very well they can tell the praise and worship to dress very well but then when it comes to another dimension of teaching the word they are very weak or you will get men who are very good in leadership you tell them this group of people you can lead them and they are very accurate in leadership but then when you get them to another dimension, it is, it is as if there is not, it's as if they are not anointed. Simply because at the verge of their training, they were trained in a specific dimension and another way was left out. So the anointing you are talking about in this series, this is just part one and a build up of what we are to do. The anointing you are talking about is not just about encounters and the word of God. There is an anointing that is vested in vessels on earth. As you follow that vessel, follow me in this series. It shall be very helpful for you. You shall learn a lot. There are ways you can get an anointing from men of God through tapes, through songs, and even by just reading their books, you tap into the anointing. Until now, I would see men in various countries and I will know this one is not an anointing for Kenya. This one has come from South Africa. This one is not for Kenya, it has come from USA. Not because that man went to USA, but because there is that dimension of that anointing they tap through tapes, through audios, and through, through reading books. There is an anointing you tap by the verge of just walking with the man of God. Sitting there and hear him every time, every time he speaks, you are there listening. There is a certain anointing that keeps falling on you. There is a specific anointing you attract by serving. By the verge of you just serving your man of God, there is an anointing that falls on you. Follow me carefully on this series because there are things you shall learn that you didn't know. There are various anointings you shall start attracting that you only thought you can get them in the prayer mountain. Yet they are with men of God. God bless you. I beg to stop it at that. Until next week. Please find us here online next week. Specific time and this specific place. Find a place. Find a notebook. Get a place to learn. You shall teach a generation that shall come after you. Because that is what the Holy Spirit is doing in this season. God bless you. God keep you. God sustain you. 
Holy Spirit, I release the grace and the power, the anointing and the oil, the understanding, the spirit of wisdom and knowledge resting upon your people. In this series, let their lives never remain the same. In Jesus' mighty name. God bless you. God keep you. It is done. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Usini pite buana Usini pite Una po kusa wiki Na mini kuse Usini pite buana Usini pite Una po kusa wiki when you are done